A very warm welcome to our online service for Sunday the 23rd of August. The psalmist writes, The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it, for he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart. Heavenly Father, we come now to worship you, to surrender our lives afresh to you. We invite you to send your Spirit upon us now, to draw us near to yourself, to reveal your love once more. If faith can move the mountains, let the mountains move. We come with expectation, waiting here for you. Waiting here for you. You're the Lord of all creation, and still you know my heart. The author of salvation, you love me from the start.
salt and light. If you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled on the foot. If you are the light of the world, a town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. In a moment, we're going to hear from Kate. But before we do that, a short commercial break. On the left. There are other food outlets available. But you know that feeling when you just fancy that certain something to eat and it's just on your mind? I want you to think now of your favourite food. Can you picture it? Mmm. Can you smell it? Can you taste it? What makes some food so tasty, so moorish, so I have to have that again? A lot of the time, it's actually the salt in the food. And Jesus talks about salt in Matthew 5, 13. Now in the message version of the Bible, it puts it like this. Jesus says, let me tell you why you're here. You're here to be salt seasoning that brings out the God flavours of this earth. The salt seasoning that brings out the God flavourings of this earth. So just as salt makes our food so tasty, so moorish, our lives should make others want what we have. To know the life-giving, life-changing love of God in our lives. Or, put it another way, Jesus says, you are here to be light, bringing God's colours into the world. Imagine for a minute, a world that has no colours, only darkness. What a depressing and really quite scary place that would be. Or think of your favourite colour, your very favourite colour. And everything in the world, absolutely everything in the world, is that colour. You know what? That would end up being really boring too. But that's not our creator God. The world that our God created has all the colours under the rainbow in it. We're going to listen to a song now called Colours of Creation. And I want to see, as you're listening to it, if you can manage to get the rainbow colours in the right order. Colours in creation say to us each day God loves us so much Rainbows high above us are another way God loves us so much A rainbow up above The promise of His love God loves us so much His promises are true God loves you Green it fills the forest Though the country's wide God loves us so much Purple is the thistle On the mountainside God loves us so much Pink it is the blossom on a springtime tree God loves us so much Blue it is the colour of the sky and sea God loves us so much God loves us so much A rainbow up above The promise of His love God loves us so much Promises are true. God loves you. Or in 
orange is the color at the break of dawn. God loves us so much. Yellow is the sun that keeps us nice and warm. God loves us so much. Red is the reminder Jesus died for me. God loves us so much. All these rainbow colors are for us to see. God loves us so much. A rainbow up above, the promise of His love. God loves us so much. His promises are true. God loves you. God sent a rainbow in the sky so every girl and boy knows that water never more will totally destroy. Purple, orange, pink, and green, yellow, red, and blue. Reminds us all, shows everyone, God loves you. God loves us so much. A rainbow up above, the promise of His love. God loves us so much. His promises are true. God loves you. His promises are true. God loves you. The rainbow has again become the symbol of hope and love, a symbol of prom promise of God's love to us. And maybe as we're coming out of lockdown and starting to think about getting back to some sort of new normal, more than ever, we need to be the people who are showing God's colour, bringing light to the world. How? Well, by not hiding the fact that we're Jesus' friends, God has given us so much and he wants us to share that love, share what we have. He wants us to celebrate with others just how amazing and satisfying life with God can be. That promise that God is with us, sharing in our everyday lives, to share the hope we have because of Jesus. That our lives will want people to open to God, be open to God, our generous Father in heaven. Amen. Just thought as well, some ideas to try at home. Why don't you add some food colouring to your ice cubes and make a rainbow drink? Or why not have a taste test at home and see which of the tastes you like and which tastes you don't like. Let us know how you get on, that would be great. Thank you. In my wrestling, in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea, oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence you won't let go, in the questions your truth will hold, your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea, oh. You are the peace in my troubled sea
2020 has been a very different year to the one that we envisaged it would be. The emergence of COVID-19 has caused seismic changes in our world, leaving nobody unaffected as every aspect of life becomes disrupted. But perhaps now we're starting to see and to think through some of the longer term effects. We're starting to be aware um, of the financial issues, the social issues, the effect on things on mental health, the impact of young people not being in education for six months. Those um, young people who've recently um, had um, their GCSE and A-level um, assessment results um, are deeply aware of the impact that COVID-19 has had on them. We head into a global recession and that's going to have an impact on everybody, but mostly those who are already poor or disadvantaged. And whilst we'd rather think of this as a storm that's going to pass very quickly and that all will be back to normal, whatever that is, um, very soon, there are actually far more far reaching and long lasting effects. In fact, the impact of COVID-19 has been described by some as a mini ice age. It's very clear that the world is far from being what it should be. And as we wonder about the future of what sort of world might emerge and how we should be responding both as church and as individuals, we ask the question, who are we meant to be and what are we meant to be doing as the world goes through this time of upheaval? As Christians, we're called to be witnesses of Jesus' love, grace and mercy, which brings freedom and life and blessing. But what does that mean practically? Gary Hahn, CEO of International Justice Mission, which is a global organisation um, which protects the poor from violence throughout the world, developing world, says, the church, and that's us, is most who we are meant to be when the world is as it is least meant to be. The church is most who we are meant to be when the world is as it is least meant to be. And in this passage, Jesus tells us what that means. He says, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the earth. Now those aren't comfortable instructions because light finds its power and purpose in the darkness. And salt, an ancient preservative, finds its power and purpose in decay. And neither the darkness nor decay are particularly pleasant places to be in. But our calling as Christians is to be in those places, to be light in the darkness and salt in the decay. When I think of examples of who's been salt and light, I think of people like William Wilberforce, who did so much work leading um, to the abolition of slavery. I think of Desmond Tutu, who led the truth and reconciliation work in South Africa after apartheid. Now, we may not be Wilberforces or Tutus, but each of us are called to be salt and light wherever we are. Because Ephesians 2 says, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus, to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. It is so tempting, and I know I'm guilty of it, to interpret the word be as being very passive. To be salt and light in a very passive, comfortable way. That just being present is enough. And sure, that's the start. But Jesus wants us to be more than a passive presence. 
Jesus warns us about the salt losing its saltiness. He wants us to be influence of the culture, rather than being so absorbed into our culture that our faith and its outworking become diluted and makes no difference. Jesus tells his followers to be light, not to hide away, so that who we are and what we do is seen, not for personal praise, but ultimately so that it points to God and that it brings people into a place of being able to worship him. To be salt and light is an active process, and it's not something we do alone or have to do in our own strength because Jesus invites us to be work with in partnership with him. He says, I am the vine and you are the branches. And as we are open to God and we are transformed by the Holy Spirit, then God changes how we love. Because what happens is that our natural care and love and concern for those around us will become a supernatural love. It helps us to see people in situations that God does, in the way that God does. Our capacity to love grows. And that transformation, that supernatural love, gives us a compassion which is courageous, so that we're able to draw near and touch or go into those places where there is darkness and decay. Those places which may be painful or costly or hard. It transforms us so that our compassion can be generous, so that we're prepared to give even where there is a cost. And it gives an ability to persevere, to keep going in the face of challenge and opposition. So we're called to be agents of Jesus saving love, to be salt and light to be filled and transformed by the Holy Spirit so that our love and compassion grow. But that love and that compassion need to be transformed into actions. We need to start to take some steps. How? Well, we need to start taking that first bold baby step and to allow God to take us into places where we're out of our comfort zone where the world is in pain. Now the best way to go out of your comfort zone with God is not just to jump and hope that it's all okay, but it's to be dependent on God, to be praying, to be reliant on his provision, to be walking closely with him, to be asking him to open the doors where that's needed perhaps giving us the words to say or the opportunity to say them, giving us the ideas or the means of working out how those ideas translate into a plan, putting the right people in our path. You see, there's a pattern of our heart being transformed by the Holy Spirit, of being filled with love and compassion that leads us to take those first steps into doing something and that we're in a place where we're in a place of dependence on God and then having done that where we come back to him for that ongoing refilling of the spirit and then we can go forward with another step that next step and as we take small step followed by another small step followed by another then those steps become cumulative and we're on the journey. The light becomes stronger, the salt is more powerful, the darkness becomes smaller and the, the decay less potent. Those places outside our comfort zone will be different for each of us. It may be something as simple as sending a text or a card to someone we know who's unwell or lonely or bereaved. Perhaps it's volunteering at Cornerstone, speaking out against bullying or racism in the workplace or school, giving to an organisation and then praying for their work. Perhaps it's asking God to transform our hearts 
in our places of work so that we can see our colleagues and the work that we do in the ways that God does. Perhaps it's starting to do some sort of work where there is a need. And in these coming times, the needs are going to be there in a way that they've not been there for not been before. So what are the steps that God might be asking us, either as individuals or as a church, to take so that we can be salt and light? So that as we face the uncertainties and the challenges and the pain, that as we're in a world which isn't as it should be, that we are equipped and empowered by God to be salt and light where it's needed. Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? Let's take a moment to come to God in confession for the times when we have allowed our faith in him to grow weak. Lord, you placed us in the world to be its salt. We were afraid of committing ourselves, afraid of being stained by the world. We did not want to hear what they might say and our salt dissolved as if in water. Forgive us, Jesus. Lord, have mercy. Lord, you placed us in the world to be its light. We are afraid of the shadows, afraid of the poverty. We did not want to know difficult people, and our light slowly faded away. Forgive us, Jesus. Lord, have mercy. Lord, you placed us in the world to live in community. Thus, you taught us to love, to share in life, to struggle for bread and for justice your truth incarnate in our lives. So be it, Lord Jesus. Amen. As we continue to reflect on the theme of being salt and light, we're going to turn our attention now to one of the charities that we are supporting this year, Hamseya International, seeking to bring the love of Jesus Christ to the Muslim world, especially amongst Farsi speakers. Good morning, everyone at St. James's in Carlisle. We bring you our warmest greetings uh, from London. Uh, we are the Arians, and we're really thankful to yourselves as a congregation for giving so generously to us in April and uh, also um, praying for us on a monthly basis. So thank you. And I hope as you hear what we're involved in, you'll be excited at what God is doing. But first, uh, by way of introduction, now you'll know from my dulcet tones that I'm not from England. I'm from County Antrim in Northern Ireland, and I've been long-term friends with uh, Francis in your congregation. And then we have... Um, Jalal, and I'm eight years old, and I'm turning nine in August so soon. Mm -hmm. So happy birthday in advance. And then? <laughs> and uh, my name is Amir and I'm the father of the family. And I'm from Iran. Yeah. So um, it's our pleasure this morning to introduce Hamsaye to yourself. Now, it's not a good old English word. Indeed, Hamsaye is Farsi for neighbour, as some of you might know from the website. And uh, it's uh, based on the verse in John 12. And it talks about. Uh, as we know, loving our neighbour as ourself. And what better way to love our neighbour uh, than to share the transforming power of the gospel with them and uh, to see people strengthened in their faith. And so we specifically focus on one type of neighbour, and that's those who speak Farsi. So from Iran, uh, which is Amir's country, and from Tajikistan, where they speak Tajik, and from uh, Afghanistan, where they speak Dari. So these are similar languages. And we all we work both inside the country of Iran specifically, and we work with the diaspora here in West London. And some of the things that we're involved in um, are outreach ministries like the Treasure House. It's relatively new. We set it up about a year and a half ago. And this is a place 
that's easily accessible in West Ealing. It's right on the street and uh, Persians are invited to come in and to borrow and to read um, uh, the Christian books that are available and we offer English classes. And our heart uh, is to see uh, Persians come to Christ. And so we're available for reading the Bible with them, for praying. And then once a week, Amir runs Bible studies with them in Farsi. And we give thanks to God that we've seen uh, two uh, Iranians come to Christ. And we know that they're genuinely walking on with him. And then we feed them into our local church that we're a part of. So that's the treasure house. Then we have a Friday night group uh, going in our house where they meet together every other week. And these are seasoned believers. Amir, uh, even before he met me, which is what, over 11, 12 years ago, where te- was he was teaching some of um, these Iranians. He's seen them come to faith and to grow in faith. So that group's still going strong. Amir then over the last few years has gone to different churches throughout the country and um, in partnership with the leadership, um, has created uh, tailor-made courses for the Iranians uh, in those congregations and taught them for varying lengths of time. And then we do some cross-cultural training uh, with indigenous English-speaking churches to enable them to reach out to uh, Persians. So uh, that keeps us busy. But um, because we have limited time, we can't go into all of that and all that the Lord has done. But he's been so good to us, including our in-country work, which we won't say much about because of security reasons. But having said all of that, we've seen God work and release prisoners from prison and uh, seen a, a mighty work there. But I'm going to hand over to Amir a wee minute or two to talk about our latest project, which has been airlifted in lockdown called Radio Hamdam. Mm-hmm. Hamdam means a close companion and Radio Hamdam is an internet-based radio that uh, broadcasts 24 7 around the world wherever internet is available. And uh, for last few months uh, since this corona crisis happened, many churches are closed around the world and especially inside the uh, um, target country like Iran, Afghanistan, Tajikistan, those little fellowship that they stopped. So radio, we have heard many testimonies from inside the country and outside some people in Europe, some people in America and other parts of the world that the radio is uh, helping them and it's uh, it's available. They can listen to it on, uh, on their computers, on their mobile phone. They have, there's an app for iOS and also for Android that uh, people can receive and listen. So the programs are a mixture of uh, preaching and teaching and uh, worship music and some folklore music. And uh, we hope to send the details. I'll ask Claire to send the details to your uh, email and then you can distribute towards the friends if you have uh, Persians in that part of the country that they can listen to radio. And uh, I want to thank you so much for your uh, prayers and supports because we do it uh, people like you who would stand with us and partner with us in the gospel. We wouldn't be able to do what God called us to do. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. And hopefully see you in person sometime. So please do keep uh, praying for us. And if you'd like to get our newsletters, um, please go to the website and just sign up and we'll be, we'll happily send you those. So God bless from us and uh, thank you for listening. So the website is www.hiuk.org. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank Bye you. everyone. Bye. Let's pray together. We pray for the many who have had to flee their homes and their countries, where people are in danger for their lives and live in fear. Lord, we pray for peace in desperate situations, for compassion and provision for safety, for wisdom on how to help those in need, 
and support the many who've had to flee their homes to rebuild their lives and restore hope. Help us to be good neighbours to those who are near and to those who are far and may seem too remote for us to care. We thank you for our Queen, for her faith that she shares and her tireless service for our country. We, thank you, we ask for your blessing and protection over her and for her whole family. We pray for our government in these difficult times and pray for everyone in leadership, our ministers and our local leaders alike. We do pray for decisions and policies to work for the benefit of those in greatest need. We pray that we would not neglect those who struggle financially or mentally at this time of great uncertainty, but would build communities of hope and be there for each other. We do pray for those who are anxious and fearful today and in a moment of silence, would you pray for anyone that you are aware of who is in particular need of prayer today? We pray for our young people making plans for this coming year, following the A-level and GCSE results. And we pray for healing and restoration for all who find their results particularly upsetting. We pray for all those who were most affected by the initial A-level results and for new openings with the adjusted grades. We pray for renewed hope and openings where each young person can grow in their skills and their gifting. We pray for resilience and protection over our young people and for provision and support, especially with mental health concerns. We pray that many of our young people will find faith in you and find their identity secure in you, Jesus, and peace and trust concerning today and their future. And we do pray for us as a church that we would know how to best support our young people. We pray for that your church across the country would nurture and build our young people and help them to become confident and passionate followers of you, Lord Jesus. We pray for your blessing over our streets. We pray for ourselves that we would be alert to see where you are at work and join in. And that we would be rooted in you to be the light and the salt that you are calling us to be in our homes, our streets, our workplace, in our neighbourhood. In our moment of silence, we'd just like to ask you to pray for blessing over your street or a situation that you are aware that where there is a real need for prayer at the moment. And lastly, we pray for our mission partners, Hamza Yi. We thank you for your gospel that has the power to change lives, to bring freedom, new life. We pray for your blessing over Claire, Amir and Jalal and all they do to be a good neighbour, to reach out to the Persian communities with the gospel. We thank you for your calling on their lives and we pray, we pray that it will bear much fruit for your kingdom. We pray for your strength and wisdom for them for each day. We thank you for the ministry of the Treasure House, the fellowship groups and the radio programmes. We thank you for the new openings for the gospel through the radio. And we pray for those who are listening to be drawn closer to you, Jesus, and find faith in you. We thank you that no man-made structure can stop your spirit from moving and calling people back to you. We do pray for our persecuted sisters and brothers, for ease to their situations, for your presence to be evident in all those prisoned for their faith in you and for your protection and release into freedom. And to bring our prayers together, let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now 
and forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us for our online service today. Before our service concludes, we do have some exciting news about the future of the op shop on Denton Street. Hello everyone, my name is Andy and I'm the manager of Cornerstone and the op shop, which is a charity shop, uh, located in Denton Home, Carlisle. I have some exciting news to share with you today. Um, as many of you are aware, our, our charity shop has been very popular, very busy, and we're often inundated with donations, which has been absolutely fantastic. Um, but that also comes with a challenge regarding space. Um, we've, we have got to a point where we have kind of outgrown the space that we have in the op shop. Um, the stairs in, in our back of house storage area were very steep 
make it quite difficult to get up and down the stairs with donations. And I'm pleased today to share with you that we're actually going to be moving our op shop premises um, to across the road. The new premises is bigger, so we've got a lot more shop space, um, more space to display these fantastic items that people are donating, um, a nicer area to have our till so that we can still engage in conversations with our customers there. So our shop space consists of two rooms that will be able to display all our bric-a-brac and clothing and toys etc in. And then we've also got more usable space for sorting and reorganising our donations, and pricing, that sort of stuff. So over the next few weeks we're going to be carrying out some maintenance work, installing things like new lighting, so it's a really bright light space, decorating, there's, there's some holes and things we need to fill. and then also kitting it out and putting new shelving units in it, new display units, um, so that we can really make the most of showing off the fantastic clothes and bric-a-brac and toys and things like that that we, we receive um, every day from um, our community. So very exciting. Please do pray that maintenance and things go smoothly and that there's no problems or we don't, we don't discover any hidden things that we weren't aware of. So um, exciting news and there'll be more details as we progress with it. Take care. Bye. <laughs>